Hey everybody, and welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. In the next few videos here, um, you're going to follow me along as I build the new Round 2 Space 1999 Eagle. Okay, so um, this is a much highly anticipated model. Um, I'm not going to tell you too much about or go over much what's in the box because I've already done a preview of the kit. But a couple points here, it does come in at 22 inches like the box says, so it's going to be much larger than the old MPC kit. Not only that, it's going to be a lot more accurate too. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do here is just spend a minute just to give you an overview of what I plan to do with the kit. And uh, so let me just go ahead and start first of all with the color that I've chosen for the exterior. So the color here is Duplicolors Oxford White. And this is very much a personal choice, but uh, after looking at the choices that I did have in a store and just comparing the cap colors, that's all I had to go by, um, I found this one seems to have a, a, a grayish hue to it. I always thought the models um, did have a grayish tone to them. There, there's certainly lots of different shades of white you can choose from. Uh, I just didn't want to choose anything that was just really too bright. Um, so hopefully it'll turn out well, but uh, I've had uh, good luck with Duplicolor uh, paints in the past, so um, I think it'll, it'll be a good choice here. Okay, so I have the instructions uh, in front of me here, and uh, what you see here is the command module, and that's what we're going to concentrate on in this video. Uh, command module is made of not only exterior here, but also uh, an interior that's going to be built out with two astronauts in place. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and light the command module, and there is a Facebook page. If you're not familiar with it, you should join it. It's called Space 1999 Props and Ships, and I can tell you a number of people have already tackled this model. and. Um, it's been good to sit back and see what kind of issues people have come up with and run across um, and kind of see how well they've uh, or how they've decided to uh, tackle different problems including lighting the command module. So um, what I plan to do is to uh, uh, go ahead and light the command module. Um, my initial thought was to use 1.8 millimeter um, LEDs. Those might not be bright enough but we'll see how that goes. Uh, but if we can get 1.8 millimeter LEDs um, we can get them to shine individually on the pilots but uh, I don't know that might not be bright enough because the one thing I did want to do is conserve some space here and my thought was to use a, a coin size battery if we can so that we can um, have a little bit of extra room to work with here where the battery is going to be housed. Uh, the other thing that I've seen people do is to light up the landing gear. Now this is an effect you did not see on a television show but uh, it's kind of on the order of um, you see uh, uh, modern day airplanes have uh, lights uh, at the landing gear or over the landing gear and so that's kind of the idea here. Now if I um, can do this, what I would do is install lighting here on each of the pods. They would face down onto the landing gear and they would have to be wired in um, and connected to the battery source here. So uh, still some things to work out and to think about, but these are kind of the things I'm, I'm giving some thought to now. Okay, one last thing actually before we move on, uh, you can buy accessory kits for this model. Uh, particularly I'm talking about the metal pieces that you can buy to um, replace the engine bells uh, in particular and some of these other pieces here. Um, I decided not to do that. Uh, that is uh, yet about another $150 I believe to invest in that and I just don't have the budget for that. So what we're going to do when it comes to those metal pieces we're going to use uh, Alclad paints. I think that should work out pretty well. Alright so let's go ahead and get started now. All right, I wanted to show you something here before I move on. Uh, I'm in the process of painting these astronauts. I'm devoting a bit more time than I probably need to. Uh, but I just wanted to just uh, show you an example, again, of using masking fluid. Um, you can see if you want a clean line between the helmet and the suit, uh, all I did was I used uh, mask all. And uh, I applied a pretty generous amount around the collar area. And then I just masked the rest of the suit off. So I painted them orange first, uh, put the liquid mask on, and then uh, painted the helmet yellow. And then um, after removing the tape, it's just a matter of taking uh, the liquid mask off here and uh, you can just either rub it off, pull off, and as you can see, as you pull it off, it leaves a nice clean separation between the helmet and the suit. So what's really cool about this kit is they provide even the smallest decals here for the pilots, which is really nice because otherwise you'd end up painting these and they just look like black blobs probably. Um, but they do have these fine little decals and I uh, just want to show you how I'm applying them. So you just cut them out of the sheet. Um, they look just like this on the sheet. Just cut them out. Um, in fact, all you have to do is cut around them. The uh, decal will float off the sheet just as you see it is here. 
When you're applying these though, I just take a, an X-Acto knife and position it on there. And then I am using uh, Micro Set, which is this, this solution right here to soften the decals. And that way it'll um, conform to the shape of his arm. So uh, just to give you an example here, let me just put this other guy right up here. Here he is, okay. So um, we're gonna apply a decal here on this shoulder and you can see they are fairly small. So again, I'm just, uh, it's a little awkward to do this here on camera, but um, I just put it onto the surface and then uh, just position it properly up at a shoulder. Okay, and then I just, I'm gonna dab with a Q-tip now uh, the Microset solution. Okay, and then um, you just put a little bit on there like so. And uh, it takes a few minutes there for the decal to soften. And essentially once you get it on there, you just leave it alone. But uh, uh, again, it's a little difficult to do this here on camera, but um, here we go. Okay, and uh, you just take the dry side of the Q-tip now, kind of firmly press it into position there and you can see it stays in place. And we just gotta give that enough time to dry. As I said, it will soften the decal and conform to his sleeve. All right, um, also what I wanted to mention here is, um, so you can just paint the helmet yellow, but uh, I know that there's a face shield that is a light orange that uh, slides over the face, obviously. And um, so what I decided to do was just to try to see what happens if I use Tamiya's clear orange. And you can see it dries with a nice gloss color and a little bit of that yellow is peeking through. So it uh, looks like a transparent shield that is, um, you know, rested over his forehead there. So I think that worked pretty well. Uh, the black lining here, I just applied with a marker. Okay, before moving on, I just thought I'd show you the completed pilots now. Uh, I'm not much of a figure painter, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the way these turned out. And I know you're not gonna be able to see the shoes or even the bottom part here. So if you didn't want to, you don't really have to paint those. Really, you're gonna be able just to see probably from the chest plate on up. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Let me show you what else I'm doing here as we move forward with the cockpit. All right, so what I'm doing now is working on the back wall of the cockpit. You can see uh, certain areas have now been masked off with mask all. And uh, the reason that's the case is because I went ahead and painted it white, and now I'm gonna apply the tan color. So the paint I purchased uh, initially for this was this Armor Sand, but uh, the instructions tell you to use light tan. I just couldn't find light tan at the store. Uh, and this turned out to be too dark, so I'm not gonna proceed with that. It just so happened, however, I did have some craft paint here that is a light tan, and comparing it to the reference photos that I have, this actually looks pretty close, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. So I'm gonna go ahead and thin this out, put in an airbrush, and uh, paint the back wall. And here's the back wall completed. So the steps I followed, uh, as you saw, I had everything masked off, so I applied the tan color, which by the way, I darkened with just a few drops of black. And um, so once the tan color was applied, um, I went ahead and masked off the areas to apply then the orange paint and then I uh, hand brushed the black markings. After that I peeled all the masking fluid off. That left the uh, girls white here just as I wanted. Left the door white and then uh, this grill up here is actually painted dark blue. I'm not sure you can notice that here. Uh, and then that was pretty much it and I applied the decal for the Eagle One. So as you can imagine, a lot of this detail is not going to be seen, but I just couldn't bear with the fact of just leaving it half done. So I went ahead and just completed it all. Uh, you're just going to basically see a triangular area pretty much around here uh, of this uh, back wall. Okay, you'll have to excuse me here because I'm doing this after the fact. The original tape got screwed up here. But what I want to show you now is a kit that you can get from a gentleman named Steve Coates. You can find him on Space 1999 Props and Ships. Now this videotape is obviously being made on April of 2016, so this is currently available. If you're watching this uh, much farther down the line here, I'm not sure if they are still available, but for now anyway, you can find them again on that Facebook page. So what this is, is a kit that helps you address the uh, white frames that are located around each of the windows. So as you know, the uh, uh, Eagle has four of these uh, triangular windows. The top two are clear, and you can see the pilots through, uh, through those, and then the bottom ones are painted black. Now you can either address this by just painting these frames, or you can use this kit, which is very simple to use. Uh, this comes pre-cut now with these frames, so this is one complete set here. 
the ones that you see already punched out here are ones that will uh, surround the upper windows, and you just apply them as so. And then the bottom one, uh, the bottom windows are addressed by uh, utilizing these here instead of the clear windows that come with the kit, because there's four clear windows that come with the model. Uh, but instead of those, you're going to um, put these into place. Um, now, obviously, the, again, the bottom ones are painted black, so uh, this also comes with this uh, masking tape here that's pre-cut, and it's in the shape of the frames as well. And that allows you to um, paint these black, and when you peel away the masking tape, it leaves behind the white frame. Now, actually, what I did was I decided just to buy two of them, and uh, that way I had frames for the upper and lower windows. Um, so you can do it either way. I just decided to, um, to have two sets myself. So let me go ahead and proceed and show you now how I went ahead and installed these. All right, well, after experimenting with a few different options here for lighting, and as you recall earlier in the video, I mentioned I was going to use 1.8 millimeter LEDs. They just weren't bright enough. I was hoping to create enough space in the walkway here to uh, allow for two coin-sized batteries, uh, one for the cockpit and one for the landing pod lighting gear, or landing gear, I should say. And unfortunately, the uh, coin-sized battery is not bright enough. Uh, so what I decided to do is to abandon using the 1.8 millimeter lights and just go with a single 3 millimeter uh, LED, which seems to provide uh, ample um, uh, illumination of the cockpit. Okay, so the question now is how to mount that uh, 3 millimeter LED. So uh, after thinking this through, what I decided to do is to create a uh, mounting piece that will fit in between the two windows here, and then the LED will hang uh, on that. This is going to be from the ceiling down. So the way I uh, made that was with the use of just some extra styrene plastic. And, you know, it's always good to have pieces of styrene um, around uh, just for odds and ends and for things like this because uh, sometimes you just have to um, kind of come up with ways to do these sorts of things. So what we have here is just uh, styrene plastic has been cut with a hole drill that will mount the 3mm LED into. And on the back side we have to um, provide some support for this. So on the back side I have uh, this piece here that was created uh, from some strip styrene here from Evergreen Models. Uh, it's just hollow. Again, I just have this sort of stuff uh, just in my drawer. And then uh, I decided to add a little extra support here, which is using some thinner styrene here, uh, and this will mount onto the uh, uh, interior of the hole this way, like so. Uh, now, one other thing that uh, presents a problem is uh, sometimes when you have a, an LED mounted this way and it's in close proximity um, to uh, the uh, section that the light's going to be landing onto, you can create a spotlight effect. So what we need to do is diffuse the light a bit. So uh, I have some clear styrene here that I've uh, hazed over with some uh, sandpaper, and this will mount on top or in front of the LED and uh, will help diffuse the light. Also going to go ahead and tint the LED with some clear yellow by Tamiya uh, just to give it a more uh, amber color. And uh, let's go ahead and mount this now and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here it is pieced together, and you can see that the uh, uh, mounting piece is hanging um, pretty securely here from the top. Uh, we have our LED here that's been tinted, and um, the wires are running from the back. And then I have this diffuser here that I've created uh, to mount on the top of that. And um, as it shines onto the back wall, it does a pretty good job with spreading the light around. And just to give you an idea how it illuminates the cockpit here, you can see that uh, we're getting a pretty good amount of diffusion of light. All right, so now let's go ahead and piece the command module together, and uh, we'll move on. All right, so the one thing about the command module is it has a fairly good-sized seam here, so we have to address that. Uh, so this is what I'm going to do now, is I've uh, masked off the area that I'm going to apply putty. Uh, I do this because it uh, makes for a little neater application, so it's not all over the place. Um, and so once that's dry, I'll remove the uh, tape, and um, we'll start sanding.
Okay, guys, and this is how the seam is looking. Uh, pretty happy with the way it turned out. You can see it's all smoothed over now. And, um, you know, there's no magic to this. Really, it's just a matter of patience and just repeat the uh, steps that I've been showing you here. Um, so once I apply the putty, you know, you got to let it dry. This Tamiya white putty actually works really well for this project. Um, it dries pretty decently within about 30 minutes or so. You might want to give it a little longer than that, but uh, you just want it dry enough to where you can sand it smooth. And um, once you sand it, uh, you uh, use different grits as you're doing so. Uh, I start off with a 400 grit, move on to an 800, and finally to a 1200. By trying to get to a 1200 grit, you're pretty much polishing the surface there. And then once you're done, uh, you've got to take uh, the model and look at it carefully under some good lighting. And just really look at the surface. If you're still seeing a line there, you got to go back and reapply the putty. Um, so just a little patience there, and you'll get to the point that you want. Um, again, pretty happy with the way this turned out. Okay, so let's keep moving on. All right, guys, I'm in the process of painting the windows, at least the area around the windows. And I wanted just to show you uh, my technique of doing this. Now, even at this stage in the game, there are times when I become a little impatient. And, you know, it always just turns around and bites me in the rear because there's just, it never pays off. So, uh, and that's what happened. I tried to mask the whole command module off and then paint the windows. But sure enough, I had leakage because I just wasn't... Uh, paying close enough attention. So what I'm doing is I'm doing each window section separately. Doesn't take as much time as you think, but this is the way I'm approaching it. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm cutting small strips of this Tamiya masking tape and applying it along the edge of this window area here. And what I'll do is I'll take a Q-tip and uh, just run it along the edge here to make sure I really get a very, very good seal. And that's really the most important part there, is make sure you get a really good seal along the edge there. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and apply the other two strips, and then I will show you what I do from there. Okay guys, and you can see here now that I have the entire area draped off with just the triangular area exposed. Kind of like you're doing surgery. If you've ever seen surgery being done, that's what they do. They just drape uh, everything else and just expose the area that they're working on. So what I've done here is I've just taken painting paper. You can get this stuff at Home Depot and just uh, torn off sheets so that I can completely cover the area around it and uh, then use the blue masking tape to just isolate. And then you just run your Q-tip again along the edges, make sure you get a nice good seal. And now what we're gonna do is use our airbrush here and apply very, very fine mist of paint. And that will uh, also prevent a bunch of paint from accumulating along the edges and then taking the chance of it bleeding through. All right, so let me just show you when it's done. And you can see how it turned out here. Uh, all the black areas here are nice and delineated. You've got some crisp, clean lines. Uh, we have our window frames in place as well. Now, I want to clarify one thing about these window frames is when you order a set, you're going to get window frames for the top, solid windows for the bottom, and it also includes some uh, masks or painting masks that are to be used for the uh, white outlines on the bottom windows. I actually or had ordered two sets, and I used frames on all four windows so that it looks even from top to bottom there. Okay, so we're ready to move on. Let me go ahead and put the command module together now, and um, we'll show you how it all looks lighted up. Okay, so you can see the lighting system here, which is comprised of one LED, as I showed you earlier. And um, there's a diffuser, as I said, over that um, that helps to spread the light around inside the cockpit. And let's go ahead and uh, put that into place, and I'll show you it from the uh, front view. All right, and you can see now how the cockpit is being illuminated from the interior. All right, guys, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here, and we'll pick it up then in part two as we continue our build with the Space 1999 Eagle. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me here or send me an email at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. Take care.